Hey everybody, I decided to combine days 10 and 11 um, prompts are bodies and sunflowers. I had planned originally to do two separate videos and they weren't really going to be related, but over the last few days a lot has happened for me. So with everything that happened, my mind changed on what I wanted to do the video for bodies over and over the last two days it has morphed into one video idea. I know I've mentioned it before, but I have really bad anxiety. And yesterday I had four panic attacks, so far today I've had four again, and I am physically a bit ill because of it. I have a tension headache, earlier it was a migraine, I took some painkiller and Turner gave me a back and shoulder massage and that helped immensely as did the crimp oil that my sister Kelly made me. One of the symptoms for me of my anxiety, especially when it gets really high, is that I have a lot of trouble eating anything. So whenever my anxiety gets really high and I have panic attacks, it gets really hard for me to eat and today it was like that um, and it made me physically feel really sick. I've been feeling nauseous all day and I'm just exhausted. So I wanted to make today's video about listening to your body. The way that Sunflowers ties into that is because of a friend that I had growing up uh, who passed away a few years ago named Mandy Batson. I have made a video before um, on my old channel uh, and memory of her. I made it on the one year anniversary of when she passed away. A couple years after that, I was able to get a tattoo that we had actually designed together um, from when we were teens. Mandy went through a lot from having the same heart condition as I do to being diagnosed with leukemia and being declared dead several times before being successfully resuscitated to having a double lung transplant, several bone marrow transplants, her DNA actually changed and she went from being an easily tanned girl with dark brown hair to being light skinned, freckled, and having strawberry blonde hair. We all knew her body probably wouldn't last for long and that was a really difficult thing for anyone and everyone to deal with and we actually planned the tattoo as a tattoo in memory and honor of her. So I got her two favorite colors just in simple bands around my arm, lime green and hot pink. She dyed her hair those colors several times. She almost always had those colors as her nail polish um, and they just made her really happy. But. That was just the simple design. Um, the bands going all the way around was to signify her unending effect on my life. But something she was unaware that I decided to add, um, I decided to do it shortly before she passed away. Um, I decided to add a sunflower to it. So. So, sunflowers were her favorite flower. She actually had a plush one wrapped around her IV stand every time she had an IV. And there were times where she had IV stands that she had to take with her to classes. They just made her really happy. And to me, she was kind of like a sunflower. She was always very young at heart. She was very happy and tried to share joy and she always tried to find a way to make people's days brighter. She helped me through some of my toughest times mentally and physically and so when I tend to look at the tattoo I think not only of her strength but what she taught to me. And what she taught me is something that I also had to teach myself how to do in very different ways from when I was a kid. And that, as I said earlier, is to listen to my body. We all have our aches and pains and struggles that we deal with health-wise and mentally. 
some of us deal with more than others. I have a really long list of problems health-wise, and I always have, from bunions to arthritis to weak shoulder and ankles to in really severe anxiety to palpitations and troubles breathing sometimes and chronic migraines. I just, I'm constantly in pain in one way or another. It can get really annoying and really overwhelming, and a lot of the times I just tend to try to ignore it. I try to push through the pain, and that always ends up leading to way more injury and distress than I would have dealt with in the first place had I taken the time to listen to my body, adjust what I was doing, and take care of myself. Just last month in April is a really good example of that. I was trying to learn how to skip rocks with Turner. He is weirdly amazing at it. And I can barely skip once if I even manage that. Um, and he's just always wanted to teach me and I've always wanted to learn. But when he was trying to teach me, instead of listening to the pain in my, my already unstable shoulder, I decided to just keep going and keep going, and so it started hurting more and more, and by a couple days later, I realized I had strained my shoulder. That meant I needed to rest it for almost an entire month, and it made it harder to cook and bake and to do everything that I love. And then this week, it was my anxiety. I picked up so many shifts over the last few weeks that I've been working full-time hours for almost three weeks, and thankfully I had today off, um, so I'm recuperating a little bit, and I'm calling in tomorrow because of how sick I still feel. Um, and the fact that I still need to prepare for my family visiting, um, and I need to find time to rest as well as get everything that I need to finish done. But because of not listening to my body, to seeing the physical and mental state that I was in just deteriorating, I ended up having a mental break a couple days ago in the evening, and then yesterday I had four panic attacks. Today I had four panic attacks, and that could honestly have been way worse than it has been. Um, I've definitely had way worse, but a sign of how bad it was is I had some of my agoraphobia kick back in today whenever I just needed to go to the store and get new deodorant. A lot of people aren't aware that I have dealt with agoraphobia before, not in the way that it's depicted in shows and movies and the more stereotypical cases, but my anxiety got so bad uh, about four years ago that when I had my first really major mental break, I was terrified of even leaving my bedroom, let alone my apartment. This went on for several months, though after just two weeks I was back at work. But it took my hours that had just become full-time hours down to only 12, maybe 15 hours a week, and that's all I could manage before breaking again. Thankfully, I am way better at listening to my body than I was back then, but I still have a very long way to go. I need to stop pushing myself to stand for too long when my arthritis kicks in in my knees. I need to stop carrying things with my right arm as much because it hurts after only just a couple of minutes. I need to make sure I'm sleeping more when I'm sleep deprived. My anxiety raises so much because I'm not rested enough. I need to pay attention to what visual, sound, and actual stimuli are causing my anxiety to rise higher and higher. And then there is the fact that I need to listen to my thoughts. My anxiety is largely based off of sound and thoughts. Um, a lot of loud sounds trigger me. I honestly don't know what specific things those stem from, um, but they are constant and overwhelming fears of mine. The other things are my own thoughts, the thoughts that trigger spirals that I can't get out of, that lead me to just 
being a, a mess sitting on the floor for several hours crying while in the fetal position. And yes, that has happened a few times recently. I need to listen to those thoughts, not to pay attention to them, but to acknowledge them and to see how they're wrong so that I can get out of those thoughts. I need to pay attention to when my body is hungry so I can stop and eat because one of the things that makes my anxiety the worst other than lack of sleep it is lack of eating properly which then just falls into a really bad spiral from not being able to eat because of being anxious and literally sometimes getting sick because of eating when I feel like that. Thankfully today I was able to force myself to eat until dinner. I ate about half of my dinner and I still haven't finished that. I'm going to make sure I have a snack before bed though. So this is my reminder to you to stop and pay attention to how your body feels. Listen to your body and make changes that help it. Eat when you feel hungry. Drink water. Drink lots of water. Make sure you're getting enough sleep. Don't put too much pressure on yourself to get a bunch of stuff done because that is not good for you. It causes stress and lack of sleep and just takes all of your energy. And please, please, if you're in pain, do something about it. I know not all pain can be completely eliminated, but even like taking painkiller, using essential oil blends, there are so many things that you can do to help ease your physical pain, and easing your physical pain will help so much with your mental stress, your sleep, and the rest of your life. Please take care of yourselves. I will see you tomorrow. I hope you are doing really well. I love you all. Bye. So that I can make sure my body is fueled enough. <laughs>